Hola, I'm Darkies and welcome to my studio. On today's adventure, I'm gonna take you from Miami to Japan. Back in 2014, I went to Japan for my honeymoon and we took several pictures which inspired this painting. I put the list of materials in the description. So I start off as usual by color blocking and in this case I'm using some light gray with lavender and light blue for the mountains. For the cherry blossoms I used pure magenta and for the leaves I used a mixture of ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, a little bit of white and a hint of magenta to tone down my green. So while I finished my underpainting, I figured I'd talk to you a little bit about cherry blossoms. Not only are they beautiful, but they are also meaningful, as they represent the fragility and the beauty of life. And they remind her that life is beautiful but short. Here I'm softening the background by adding lighter tones. I'm using the Fabriano paper and whenever I'm working on it, I make sure I do light brush strokes to make sure I don't rub it too hard. As I continue building up my layers, I use a transparent white as well as a mix of lavender. But the lavender that I'm using is very very light and I'm using a lot of transparent white to make it more see-through. Now I'm gonna begin doing the leaves again and I start with a really dark green and slowly I'm gonna continue building up to a lighter green by doing highlights wherever I think that it needs it. I do my highlights by adding cadmium yellow or white to my mix. Now I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue, magenta and titanium white to start working on Mount Fuji. This combination gives me a really nice purple and if I need to adjust the value then I just add a little bit of ultramarine blue or black in order to make the color darker. Now I'm adding more grays and blues in order to give it more dimension. To soften the edges of the mountain, I add transparent white. Here with a dark gray, which is almost a black, I begin adding a forest. Now I'm adding some more mountains with a mixture of ultramarine blue, cerulean blue and transparent white. And to make it softer, I add a glaze of transparent white. Now that I have some detail on the leaves and the mountain, I start working on the water. I do the water by doing horizontal strokes from side to side and also by using dark values and light values, such as the transparent white and also the ultramarine blue or a mixture of black and green to make a dark value. So here are some fun facts or trivia about Mount Fuji. It's located in an island called Honshu Island and it's the highest mountain in Japan at 12,389 feet. It's the seventh highest peak of an island in the world. 
and it's an active volcano that last erupted in 1707. Mount Fuji lies about 100 kilometers south of Tokyo. Okay, so here I'm adding a heavy body paint because I'm trying to make some texture on the top of the mountain. And here I whipped up some lavender because I want the mountains to have some of the colors from the sky. Mount Fuji has been the frequent subject of Japanese art and one artist that I will recommend you checking out is Tamako Kataoka. She lived to be 103 years old and most of her art depicts Mount Fuji. Other names for Mount Fuji are Fujisan or Fujiyama. So, now that you know so much about Mount Fuji, are you ready to climb it? The most popular period for people to hike up is July through August. For the branches, I'm using a mix of magenta and black. And for my cherry blossoms, I use different shades of pink and I use either a combination of red and white or a mix of magenta and white. To create the flowers, I'm using the stippling technique. Now I add highlights of white to the water and then I go over it with transparent white. I feel that whenever I do a glaze, it makes that section look more uniform. And here I'm using transparent yellow iron oxide to go over my previous glaze. And with this glaze I'm just experimenting. I had an idea of what it could look like but I wasn't sure how the water was going to come out. I let my glaze dry and then I continue working on the rest of the painting. In this case, I started working on the Japanese greens. Etori is a traditional Japanese gate that's most commonly found at the entrance or within a Shinto shrine, where it symbolically marks the transition to the sacred. Here I go back with a layer of dark green and a mint green to add more variety to the background. So I wasn't loving the water, so I decided to use a mix of phthalo blue, transparent white and shading gray to glaze the water again. And as you can see, I'm going over the cream, but it's okay because I'm gonna come back and paint it over again with white. Here I'm going over with dark blues, purples and white because I feel that it gives the water more vibrancy. And then after that, I do a final glaze. Now I'm repainting my crane and I'm also adding the final details to the artwork. Since I feel this piece is finished, I sign and date it. Here is a close-up of the cranes as well as the tori. And the cherry blossoms. Here's beautiful Mount Fuji on the background. And here's a shot of the water and as you can see I added some hints of pink because I thought that it would look nice. So here are some pictures of the finished piece. 
I really love how the cherry blossoms came out and I like how you can see the texture on Mount Fuji. I also like the color of the Tori and I think that the cranes really pull the painting together as it gives it that extra touch. These are some pictures from that trip and they were taken at the same place as the pictures from the Tori. And here is us. And here we are on our way to Mount Fuji. Unfortunately, it was snowing really bad that day, so we didn't make it very far. So I guess I'll have to come back again to go all the way up. So what's next for this channel? I have a 100 subs giveaway coming up, sneak peeks for the next three paintings, over 80 ideas for new video content, videos about creativity and art business how-tos. Thanks for watching! And if you like this video, don't forget to like, sub and share. If you like to be notified every time I post a video, make sure to hit the bell. So were you able to guess what the next paintings are going to be about? If so, put your comments below.